Hey, it's great to be back here again. Tomorrow's Friday. We had a very difficult week here. Um, I'm sure you've heard we had nine soldiers injured from our yeshiva. And one was killed. There was a sixth um, soldier from our yeshiva killed. Um, and the seventh soldier from Itzmah that has been killed. Um, not to mention those injured and the great challenges our families are going through. We just had a campaign this week to help our um, young families with the baby boom. They're, thank God, the blessing on the other side of all the tragedies to see how many babies were born on Itzmah in the last few months and the great need to help our um, young families and their husbands are in battle and the, the, the wives are home alone and very difficult financial challenges. So it's all mixed together. Um, Israel is in a huge um, crisis, obviously, in all fronts, as we all know, and the pain is so great, and we will come out of this no matter what. And the portion is so relevant to what's going on in the political world, as we all know, and there's a lot to learn. I just want to open up with a, with a question I was contemplating on a prayer we say when we enter the Beit Midrash. And we say, um, may it be that we don't make a mistake and our friends be happy. Um, and so entering the Beit Midrash, we're making a ruling of, of, of instruction. And we make a mistake. We don't want our comrades in the Beit Midrash to be happy with our, with our mistake we made. And the other way we say, we pray to God that we shouldn't be happy if our friends make a mistake. And that came to mind. What is this all about over here? You know, why, why the rabbis of great esteem um, have to warn Torah students that go to learn Torah in, in the house of study um, not to be happy, go if a friend makes a mistake. And the answer is they're pointing out a red flag here, and the red flag is jealousy. Is that people, as, as, as great as they are ethically, they have to always work on something, on, on in their character traits, but more than everything, they're saying the danger, one of the most dangerous character traits is that jealousy. That jealousy more than anything. Look, look what it could do. And when this week's portion, obviously we could see the power of that jealousy. And I want to um, begin with a question. You know, we, know, we know it's a famous, um, I mentioned this before, a famous teaching, Rav Sharkey mentioned this in his uh, book on the Kuzari, which he writes a very interesting um, explanation regarding Moshe Rabbeinu's prophecy. We look, coming out of Egypt, we all came out of Egypt, we came out with our, with a great dream of coming to the land and building a national homeland of the land of Israel. But the receiving of the Torah was another issue. It was another part of the whole picture. And the nation of Israel wasn't convinced in reality that Moshe Rabbeinu was a prophet in that way. They, they looked at him as a great leader, a great um, warrior for them, taking them out of Egypt. But they weren't yet convinced of accepting all his rules, that he's coming up with a whole book of 613 commandments to have to follow. You know, what made them change their mind and realize that Moshe Rabbeinu is, his, he's one of the, you know, we have 13 principles of Jewish faith, and one of them is to believe the Torah is from the heaven. And that Moshe Rabbeinu is the prophet that brought us all that. So what made them change their mind? Well, if we look in the book of Exodus, in chapter 19, where right before we receive Torah, if we look over there, we see that God says in verse number 8 to Moshe Rabbeinu, um, Moshe Rabbeinu is coming back and, and telling you know, God, he's sort of relaying the messages between, like being a go-between Israel and God regarding the receiving of the Torah. And the nation answers to Moshe Rabbeinu and they say, Kol Hashem everything that God spoke we're going to do. Now here it seems you know, wonderful that they can do everything God said, but in reality there's also a, 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 an interesting um, deduction here. Everything that God says they're going to do. In other words, they were challenging what Moshe Rabbeinu was saying to them. They didn't believe that he's the prophet to give all, this, all these details and laws down to them. So God says in the next verse, he says, Behold, I'm going to come to you with a cloud. So the nation themselves are going to hear me speaking to you. And also in you they're going to believe forever. So we see here a great teaching is that there was a clarification done. That the nation of Israel was not yet convinced that Moshe Rabbeinu was a prophet to bring down the heavenly vo word, the heavenly voice. And that was clarified in that great moment of giving Torah. But we all know later on there were a couple of things that um, sort of challenged this and, and questions that come up. How could they sin with the golden calf afterwards? But here they didn't challenge Moshe Rabbeinu. They, Moshe Rabbeinu didn't come back, so they were afraid he was gone. You could say that's not an issue. But we see later on 
cha- a couple more challenges, but they came from um, reasons, other reasons as well, of desire. Last and Pashat Balotcha, we read about those complaining about you know the man. They want real meat and all that. They were complaining about the, that they don't have the gefilte fish of Egypt. So they were challenging Moshe Rabbeinu, but out of desire. But if we look, it was sort of like slowly, you know, cracking at his leadership again. But we reached the height in this week's portion. And um, how do we reach the height? When Korach challenges Moshe Rabbeinu by literally saying he's not, he's not a prophet from heaven because our rabbis teach us that he um, literally challenged the Torah Mera Shemayim, the Torah was given from heavens that Moshe Rabbeinu was a prophet, he came against that, that whole concept. The question is why? He was this great leader of his own right. He was from the tribe of Kahat. As we know, the tribe of Kahat, um, I'm sorry, the tribe of Levi, he was from the family of Kahat. Um, Levi had three sons, Gershon, Kahat, and Merari. And the, and the family of Kahat were those who were granted the special privilege of, of, of bearing the, the ark. And, and the ark would be a, it was a miraculous thing where it would carry its own those who, bear, who bore the ark would carry them. So therefore, it's extremely unusual that Korach was so, had this great position, he was a Levite and he was carrying the ark, he saw miracles. He would challenge literally like an Apikoros, a non-believer, totally saying that Moshe Rabbeinu is not a prophet. And he came up with excuses against Tzitzit and, and Mezuzah, he was challenging laws that Moshe Rabbeinu was giving. Why, what made him turn around? He had all this, this you know, this special thing um, you, know, per, um, you know, purpose in life and all that, and the, he had everything he needed, he wasn't lacking anything, but he had to go and challenge Moshe Rabbeinu, and he became, not only that, he was, he was literally, you know, on this last um, period of his life, he, you know, he was already 120 years old, well, what was he expecting, 130 years old, whatever it was, but what, what, the last, you know, part of his life is going to try to undermine um, um, the leadership of Moshe Rabbeinu and, and lose his whole world, what brought him to this terrible, terrible measure? And the answer is, is jealousy. And, and our rabbis explain is that the Kahat, as we all know, was, which I said before was his family line, there were four sons. The four sons were Amram. Amram, as we all know, is the father of Moshe Rabbeinu of Aaron. So, okay, the firstborn, Moshe Rabbeinu received leadership. Aaron was the, was the priesthood. But if we follow and we continue going on, the other sons were Yitzhal, right? The father of, of Korah. But there were also two other sons, Hebron and Uziel. Now Korah was upset that they skipped over him because they gave Uziel's son, which was named Elitzafan, he was given the position of being prince of the tribe. So he felt <clears throat> they should have given that to me. Why they skip over me? And they, and they went to um, Uziel. So he can't, so he's using, because of that terrible hatred and the rage and the anger that was, was inside of him, he was literally willing to give up everything he had, everything. And we know in life there are people that, that are willing to break everything or you know, you know, destroy their lives over the rage and jealousy and anger. And this is really the poison that led to the terrible tragedy of Korach rebelling against Moshe Rabbeinu. It always really came from that jealousy. And they were involved here, Sanhedrin, court, high courts of Israel, and all that. But it all stemmed from jealousy, and it's so dangerous. And that's why I told you in the beginning, our rabbis made that prayer to keep away from that red flag. You've got to keep away from that jealousy. It's so dangerous. There's a beautiful um, teaching. There's a book called The Smag, um, Sefer Mitzvot Katan. The small, it's like a summary of the 613 commandments, which was written by a famous rabbi, Rabbi Yosef Mikovil from, um, from France. In the 1200s, he was the um, same generation as uh, Moshe Mekotzi, which was um, who wrote the the book about the commandments, a larger version. You know, he wrote about the explanation of the commandments um, in a much more detail. And Rabbi Yosef Bekovil was very very inspired, but he he, he said, "I'm going to make a shorter version to make it easier." Whatever it was, and he writes something very very powerful um, about the importance about forgiving. And, and a person not holding rage, but being able to, um, you know, just have patience and, and not fall into that, that whole terrible, um, you know, bad character trait that can destroy life. And he brings down a couple of examples, and he talks about the great rabbi, Rabbi Eliezer, who went to pray, and he prayed 24 different renanot, different 
um, prayers and he wasn't answered. Rabbi Kiva did one um, God, you know, our God in heaven, our Father in heaven, and he was answered. And he said the reason why Rabbi Kiva was answered in one short prayer was because he would not at all bear grudges. He was, he was able to quickly um, forgive and he was very patient and that changed, that literally made opened up the heavens for Rabbi Akiva. And he talks about how the dangers of argument over Korach, even little children were killed because of the dangers of argument and, and, and that which was of course all about the jealousy. And then he talks about it's a beautiful um, a beautiful uh, mashal parable and he talks about a proverb here and he talks about how when there are three sticks and they're tied together it's very, even the strongest powerful man can't break them when they're all tied together. But if you, they're single little, when they're single sti sticks, it's very easy to break them. So when we're united in love and avoiding the terrible jealousy and those things that take us out of the world, as it says in the, in the um, Ethics of Our Fathers, Rabbi Leza Kapa, what does he say? Jealousy, um, desires, and, and honor take a person out of the world when they're looking for those particular um, to, to satisfy their desires and all these things that's going to take them out of this world. So we see how that is what able to, that's what caused Korach to totally lose it and, the, and again, and being, being at the end of his life, you'd expect someone with wisdom and to think about how he's going to do good in the world and how he's, but he's still running after that that the jealousy game at the end of his life, it's really a terrible thing to see, and it's tragic, because what happened was literally um, a plague in Israel, thousands were killed, and they were swallowed up, and the families and children died, it was, it was a terrible thing. So we see that these character traits are, are danger for us in the world today, and we have to open our eyes what's going on today, and the political things happening in the country, where Netanyahu's leadership is being challenged, and he's being challenged by those who are all these generals of the past that they're literally jealous of him. And because of that jealousy, they're willing to sell their own people out with all kinds of crazy decisions and, and the things that are going on. We, we have to realize the answer is to unite and to be centered around love. Um, and, and that's really what's going to bring us the, um, the salvation that we're looking for and, and the redemption process. It all come out of love and patience. It's a beautiful expression brought by Rabbeinu Yonah on the, on the verse from Proverbs. From Rabbeinu Yonah, he says something, and I want to quote his words, because it's a beautiful, beautiful explanation. And it's a verse in, in Proverbs in chapter 14, and it says, Chayei b'sarim lev marpeh, u'rekav atzamot kinah. He talks about the comparison between the difference of jealousy and someone who has a heart of patience, and he says like this, he says, beautiful words, he says, rov ha-refuot, most of the medicine in the world, um, like they help certain organs and other organs um, and, and help the opposite brings them damage. So they have side effects. In other words, if you take your medicine, it has side effects on other organs, but it may help one organ in the body. But he says, but a patient heart heals all organs. So you have that patience and you, and you are showing your love and kindness and willing to forgive and and not bear grudges and get jealous and all that, that is going to heal all of our, our, our um, ailments. And that is what we have to focus on. If a person is jealous, what does it say in the end of the verse? In, 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 in Proverbs 14, it says, the rot of our bones is jealousy. The bones cause the, the body to fall apart. And literally, a whole person, as I said before, Koach, at the end of his life, has to come along and destroy everything that he had because of this foolish jealousy, we have to take this to our hearts and be kind and loving and patient. And this quality will bring us our salvation. Shabbat shalom, b'salot avot, yishimot v'nechav.